Hi, this is Ajit here. In this video, we are going to discuss phylum nematoda. Phylum nematoda comprises of roundworms. The nematodes are one of the most widespread and abundant of all metasovans. First, we will look onto the salient features of phylum nematoda. Nematodes inhabit moist terrestrial environments in all habitats. Many are parasitic on plants and animals. The body is cylindrical, elongated and fusiform, which means they are pointed at both ends. Nematodes are triploblastic, unsegmented animals. The body wall consists of a cuticle, epidermis and longitudinal muscles. The cuticle is multilayered, that is with an outer epicuticle, a cortex, a median layer and a basal layer. The anterior end of the body is radially symmetrical, but most of the body and organ systems show bilateral symmetry. The mouth is terminal and located at the anterior end and is surrounded by lips and sensilla. Nematodes have a pseudocelom, that is a false coelom, formed directly from the cavity of the blastula rather than as a result of division or folding of the mesoderm. The pseudocelom occupies the space between the body wall musculature and the gut and it surrounds the reproductive organs. The fluid in this cavity serves a hydrostatic function. There are no circulating cells in the pseudoceal. In nematodes, locomotory cilia are usually absent, but some primitive species have ciliated gastrodermal cells. They have a simple nervous system consisting of a nerve ring around the pharynx that give rise to dorsal and ventral nerve cords running the length of the body. Nematodes lack respiratory and circulatory systems. Most nematodes are gonochoric, that is, they are dioecious, but hermaphrodites are also seen. Many nematodes show sexual dimorphism, where males are smaller than females. A 2003 survey of animal biodiversity published in the journal Zoo Taxa showed that over 25,000 species of nematodes have been identified so far. The classification of the phylum nematoda is extremely complex and still there is no harmony in this respect. According to the most widely accepted system, the phylum is classified into two classes, Phasmidia and Ephasmidia. First, we will see the salient features of class Phasmidia. The class Phasmidia consists mostly terrestrial and parasitic forms, but a few are free living in the soil. Amphids are present and they are pore like and are located on lateral lips. They possess paired phasmids in the tail region. These phasmids are unicellular glands which might be chemosensory, secretory or sometimes excretory in function. In parasitic forms, these phasmids are well developed. Epidermal cells are usually uninucleated or multinucleated. Excretory glands and excretory canals are present in phasmidia. Males generally have only eight testes. The common examples are Ascaris, Entrobias, Xenorhabditis, Vocharia, Ancylostoma, and so on. Now we will move on to the details of class Ephasmidia or Adenophoria. Adenophoria or Ephasmidia mostly comprises of free living nematodes. Almost all live in marine or freshwater habitats, but a few terrestrial forms are also found. In Ephasmidia, variously shaped Amphids are located behind the lips. Amphids are paired, pouch-like or tube-like invaginations of the cuticle and they are present one on each side of the head. These amphids open to the exterior and contain receptor cells. The receptor cells in amphids are mechano and chemosensory. Phasmids are generally absent. Epidermal cells are uninucleated in a phasmidia. Here, excretory glands are present, but excretory canals are absent. These organisms feed mostly on marine microorganisms and detritus. Males generally have two testes. The common examples are trichinella, ketostoma, and epsilon. Now we will discuss in detail the class Phasmidia. The example that we are going to deal with is Ascaris. Ascaris is a roundworm that inhabits the intestine of man, pigs, cats, dogs, and many other vertebrate animals. The common roundworm of man is Ascaris lumbricoids. It is widely distributed, and the life cycle of Ascaris is spent in a single host, 
so it is a monogenetic parasite. The body is milky white in color. Ascaris exhibits sexual dimorphism. That is, the females are longer and larger than the males. The females will grow to a length of about 50 centimeters and the males will reach up to 30 centimeters. The posterior end of the female is more or less straight, whereas that of the male is curved. Females has separate anus and genital bow, which is situated midventrally at about one third distance from the anterior end. In male, the anus and the genital pore open in a common chamber called the cloaca. In males, a pair of needle-like chitinoid bodies called penile setae or penile spicules are present. The body is cylindrical, elongated and tapering at both ends. That means it is fusiform in shape. Running along the entire length of the body are four longitudinal lines, one mid-dorsal line, one midventral line and two lateral lines. The mouth is found at the anterior extremity and it is a triangular opening guarded by broad lips. The outer surface of each lip bears sensory outgrowths called papillae. In Ascaris, a pair of special papillae called amphids are also present. They are probably chemoreceptors. Just behind the mouth on the ventral side is a excretory pore. The body wall consists of three layers, an outer cuticle, a middle epidermis and an inner layer of longitudinal muscles lining the body cavity. As we have discussed earlier, the body cavity is a pseudoceal. Ascaris is gonochoric. During copulation, the male inserts the penile seta into the vagina through the genital pore. The sperms are transferred into the vagina. The fertilized eggs are covered over by shell which is made of cuticle. A single female worm can produce up to 2 lakh eggs per day. These eggs are laid in the intestine and are passed out through the feces of the host. The eggs can remain alive in the soil for several days. During this period, the embryo develops into a larvae called the rhabditiform larvae, which remains within the egg shell. Further development takes place only when the eggs are transmitted into a new host. Since there is no intermediate host, the transmission of X to the new host occurs directly by ingestion. The mode of infection is usually by contaminated food and water. And through the mouth of the host, the X finally reach the intestine. The X shells are digested by intestinal components and the second stage called the rhabditiform larvae are liberated. These larvae penetrate the intestinal wall and enters the hepatic portal system which carries them to the liver. From the liver, these parasites reach the heart and then the lungs. They undergo development and molting in the alveoli of the lungs. Then they begin a journey through the trachea, pharynx, esophagus, and finally it will reach again in the intestine. This long journey of the larvae initially from the intestine and passing through multiple organs and ultimately reaching the intestine is called the extra intestinal migration. In the intestine, the larvae again undergoes molting and finally develops into an adult. Next, we will move on to the parasitic adaptations of Ascaris lumbricoids. The body of the Ascaris is covered by cuticle that can resist the digestive action of intestinal enzymes. And the muscular and sutural pharynx helps in the sucking of fluid food materials from the intestinal walls. The extra intestinal migration enables a parasite to reinfect the same host repeatedly. The production of abundant number of eggs ensures successful transmission of the parasite from one host to another. Another parasitic adaptation of Ascaris is the presence of highly resistant eggs that can remain alive in the soil for several days and this enables the parasite to tide over unfavorable environmental conditions. Due to the endoparasitic life, Ascaris doesn't have any organs of locomotion. It doesn't have circulatory and respiratory organs as well. So next we will move on to the pathogenic effects in humans. The disease caused by Ascaris is called Ascariasis. The incidence of Ascariasis is more in children than in adults. The extra intestinal migration of the larvae causes serious damage including hemorrhage, 
injuries to vital organs, inflammation, anemia, and even eosinophilia. The adult worm causes enteritis and sometimes appendicitis or peritonitis. Heavy infection by Ascaris lumbricoids can cause malnutrition. Massive infection can result in intestinal obstruction that can even cause death. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe and share and hit the bell icon for notifications.